Hello, and thank you for joining the Word of Faith Love Center channel. I'm Dr. Reginald Garman, and we're just so delighted to have you join us today. I pray that this message that you will hear, it will inspire your soul, it will renew your mind, and it will just bring such joy in your spirit and challenge you to be everything that God has called you to be. Our mission here at Word of Faith Love Center is to love God with our living and to live God through our loving. Share this channel with your family and friends, and we hope to see you real soon at a live service right here at Word of Faith Love Center. God bless you. Hebrews chapter 8. Now, one thing this curtain has done is made you bring your Bibles. <laughs> or your iPads, or your phones, so you can turn to the Word of the Lord. Hebrews chapter 8, I want to start reading at verse number 6. Hebrews chapter 8, verse number 6, it says, But now he has obtained a more excellent ministry inasmuch as he is also mediator of a better covenant, which was established on better promises. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then no place would have been sought for a second. Because finding fault with them, he says, behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt because they did not continue in my covenant and I disregarded them, says the Lord. Verse number 10. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their mind and write them on their hearts. I will be their God and they shall be my people. None of them shall teach his neighbor and none his brother, saying, Know the Lord. For all, for all shall know me, from the least of them to the greatest of them. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness, and their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. I want to speak today from the subject upgrade. Upgrade. Tell your neighbor, say, it's time for an upgrade. Upgrade. In verse number six of this chapter in Hebrews, I want to read it to you in the easy reading Bible. The easy reading Bible in verse number six, listen to this. It says, but now God has given Jesus a much better way to serve him as a priest. The new agreement that God makes with his people is possible because of Jesus. Because of Jesus' work on our behalf, the new agreement is better than the old one. It is much better because it started with better promises. Who doesn't like better? Who does not like upgrades in their life? Who does not like for things to, to be greater in their life? I believe we are in a season of upgrade. I believe that we're in a season that what you used to have, God said, I want to upgrade that. I want to make what was good, I want to make it better, and what was better, I want to make it best. 
It's something about an upgrade. It's something about when God decides to take what you had and make it better. A better house, a better car, a better relationship. God wants to make things better in your life because we serve that kind of God. In Haggai chapter 2 verse 9, it says, The glory of this latter temple shall be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place I will give peace, says the Lord of hosts. Now what is God talking about? <coughs> in this particular text, God is talking about the old covenant that was under the Mosaic covenant. God is talking about where God gave his people, Israel and Judah, all of these laws. We understand the Ten Commandments, right? The Ten Commandments were laws that God, but there were so many other laws under the old covenant that God used to govern his people. He put the old covenant and the laws in place as a teacher to let you know that you cannot live a righteous life according to laws. You are not built that way where you are able to follow all of the laws and regulations. When you come to an understanding that we were never created to be able to follow a whole bunch of laws, then and only then do you realize that you have need of a Savior. Because if the old covenant worked, there would be no need for a new covenant. But God, in his infinite wisdom, because he's omnipresent and omniscient, he knew that I had to teach my people that they could not govern themselves and live a righteous life by themselves, but they needed some help called the Holy Ghost. Because if you ever feel like you don't need help, you won't ask for help. If you ever feel like you can do it all by yourself, you will never humble yourself and say, Lord, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my mama, not my father, but it's me, oh Lord. Father, I realize I can't love my wife without you. I can't raise my children without you. I can't operate a business without you. I can't live without you. In fact, in you, I live, I move, and I have mouth. But some of y'all think you can do it by yourself. And God said, if you think you can do it by yourself, go back to the old covenant and try to follow all of those laws that were in place. The laws were to teach you that it is not by works, but it's by his grace, by his grace that we are saved. He said, the old covenant, the Mosaic covenant, the law did not work, that I'm gonna make a better covenant on better promises. Yeah, yeah. Say upgrade. upgrade. God gave us an upgrade. Yeah. The upgrade was in the form of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Thank God for the upgrade. Yeah. Because in the old covenant, you would have to bring pigeons and doves and lamb to the priest and the priest will go into the tabernacle to make a sacrifice for the sins of the people. Don't y'all bring me no animals. <laughs> Say, that's the old covenant. Say, upgrade. So God upgraded things. He said, don't bring Dr. Garmin no pigeons and no lambs and nothing because there has been one lamb that went up, cow 
Calvary's mountain and stretched his arms wide and bowed his head and said, I'm going to pay for the price of sin once and for all. Can somebody say hallelujah? Upgrade. So we get this upgrade. We get this better promise. And this better promise, God said in the old covenant, he said, I wrote the laws on tablets because God brought Moses up the mountain of Sinai. And on the top mountain of Sinai, God wrote the the commandments with his own finger on the tablets. That was the old covenant. But in the new covenant, he said, I'm going to write it on your heart. Now, what does that mean, Pastor? That means that it is better for you to be governed from the inside rather than from the outside. The commandments were the governing from the outside where they had to look upon the tablets to know what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. But God said, in the new covenant, I'm going to govern them from the inside. This is why the psalmist said, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. Now, if I have to govern you from the outside, that means I got to be around you all the time to make sure you do what you're supposed to do. And sometimes you're going to be in your secret place. Your private place. What is going to govern you then? The only thing that's going to govern you in your secret place is when you got the Word of God hidden in your heart. And even when nobody is looking at you, you will say to yourself, that's not right. Tell your neighbor, say, from the inside. If you always got to have people around you to do the right thing, you still in the old covenant. You need an upgrade. But when you can be by yourself and a computer screen can be in front of you and you won't go to certain sites because in your heart you know it's not right. Now you just got to upgrade. Oh, come on, preach to me now. So he just got to upgrade. So this is what the writer is talking about in Hebrews. He said, I'm sending you an upgrade. I'm sending you a new covenant not to be governed from the outside, but I want you to be governed from the inside. The second thing that is described in Hebrews chapter 8, he said, with this new covenant, It's not just going to be the priest that has a relationship with me. Because in the Old Testament, you had the outer court, the inner court, and you had the holies of holies. Where you as the people, you could not go into the holies of holies. Only the priest could go into the holies of holies. But in this new upgrade covenant... We are a royal, oh, y'all better preach to me today. You are a royal what? Priesthood. Tell your neighbor, say, you a priest. And because you are a priest in this new upgrade, you can have a priestly relationship with your God where you don't have to bring me an animal. All you got to do is go before your God and say, Lord, forgive me. Creating me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit in me. I'm going to go before God myself. So in the new covenant... Everybody had a relationship with God. And that's why he said, whether you're the least or the greatest. We read it in our text this morning. He said, whether you're the least, okay, you don't remember that. Let me, let me point it out. Hebrews chapter 8, Hebrews chapter 8, verse number 10. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their mind and write them on their what? 
hearts. There it is. That's the inside, right? I'm going to write it, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. I'm going to be their God, and they're going to be my people. None of them shall teach his neighbor, and none his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me from the least of them to the greatest of them. You can come and know God for yourself by opening your word and learning about God yourself. But pastor, why do I need to come to church today? We come to church to celebrate, to encourage one another, to learn from one another because you may have a revelation, you may have a prophecy, you may have a healing. Everybody ought to bring something to church. But we've made church where pastor come and teach me. No, I should be confirming what you've already learned. But y'all don't want to read your Bible. So you come to church and let the pastor tell you what the Bible says. Oh, y'all don't want to talk to me today. That's the old covenant. The new covenant, we ought to be able to come to church and I don't have to tell you where the chapter and verse is because you already know it's in the Bible. I never seen the righteous forsaken. See, y'all should be able to complete that verse. They that know that God shall be strong and do. See, y'all should be able to complete that verse. You should know God for yourself. And so if I get up here and say something that's crazy, you'll be able to know, oh, he crazy today. (laughs) Pastor ain't feeling well today. I ain't read that in the Bible. That's why in the last days it said, many shall be deceived. You know why we're deceived? Because we don't read. That's the old covenant. The new covenant, everybody should know this word. So we don't have to waste time on the milk. We can get to the meat of the word. But I got to tell you who Daniel is and who Solomon is. We got to know the word for ourselves. And we look at all this YouTube and all these podcasts and they ain't talking nothing but garbage. Talking about the church is whack. The church is not whack. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. How in the world are you going to talk about the very institution that provided for you? How in the world are you going to do that? No! Who do you think is at your concert? Who do you think is buying your music? It is church folks. Y- y'all sit down. See, y'all, y'all done started something. Sit down, sit down. Come on, the church is whack. Don't just label the church. I know there's some whack things about the church, but Jesus died so that the church can be birthed. He is the head of the body. We are the body of Christ. Don't insult my intelligence and making me think that the church is about the four walls and the stained glass windows. Everybody in here knows that we are the church. Don't insult us that way. My body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. The only reason we have a church is because you are healed. Don't insult my intelligence. We're not that dumb to think that the church is an 
address. That's why we can go on our jobs and have church. We can ride in our car and have. We can be in our bathroom and have. Y'all take your seats. We gotta go. We gotta go. Don't insult us like that. We know that. We come to church collectively because we understand there is a collective anointing. Won't you have a concert by yourself then? Is the auditorium your concert? Stop talking about something that Jesus died for. Because you got a little change now, and now you want to talk. Man, don't give me like that. I don't care. Y'all can send it to him. I don't care. It's truth. People, okay, number one, God will govern you from the inside, not the outside. Number two, God will have a relationship with his people. That's the upgrade now. God is going to govern you from the inside, not the outside. This is why in the Old Testament, they were led by a pillar of fire by night, by day, a, a, a cloud by day, and a pillar of fire by night. That's the Old Covenant. But the upgrade is, in the New Testament, we are led by the Spirit. Amen? See, Old Covenant, they were led by external things. Pillar of cloud and a pillar of fire, external things. In the Old Testament, they had the Urim and the Thurman, and they would cast lots so they can understand the will of the Father. Old Testament, external thing. But in the New Testament, in the New Covenant, in the upgrade, he said, I'm going to put my spirit in you, and you're going to be led by my spirit. You see the upgrade? In the upgrade, everybody knew God and everybody can go before God because from the least to the greatest, there were no big I's and little U's. Upgrade. Not about titles. See, in in the New Testament, it was the church of Philippi. Where we get all these different denominations from? Well, why everybody want their own ministry? Instead of using your give to build up the church of Philippi. Everybody want their own because you don't feel good about yourself unless you have your own. That's a status situation. That is an Old Testament philosophy, but in the New Testament, we are the church of Atlanta. And that's why we got all this division in the body of Christ, because for you to feel good, instead of you feeling good about what you do and what you bring to the body of Christ, you got to have your own. 19 years ago, I told Bishop Bronner, I didn't need my own, that I can use my gift right there at the cathedral. I told him that. He said, no, we need ministry in East Point. That's the only reason I came. I didn't need my own because I already knew who I was. Amen? And if you don't know who you are, you think you got to have your own in order to define you. Mama has pastored before. But guess what? She's still a pastor. She don't need an address in order to be a pastor because she has a pastoring heart. That's upgrade. See, the world would say that's a downgrade. Ooh. But don't let the world downgrade you when God is upgrading you. 
And the fourth thing, the fourth thing, it says, I will forgive your sins and your transgressions. Read that in Hebrews chapter 8. That means you got to be accountable for your own actions. You have to be accountable for your own actions, that you got to go to your father. You got to have a relationship with your daddy where you can go to him and say, Lord, I've messed up, forgive me. And in closing, I want to give you three things that I believe is needed for you to have an upgrade. Three things in closing. Me and my son, we went um, to Mexico on um, spring break two weeks ago. That's why I wasn't here. It was a father-son trip. So uh, my son and I, I think that's probably the first time we just traveled, just us, without the rest of the family. It was a great trip. Um, it was really great for him because I paid for it. <laughs> right? Nothing like a free trip, right? So we, we get to the airport and uh, we get ready to check in and we were notified at the airport that they have upgraded us to first class. <clears throat> now, he got the upgrade because of who he's in relationship with. He didn't earn it. He, he didn't, he hadn't spent not one dime. He hadn't earned not one sky mile, but he got the upgrade because of who He's in relationship with. That young boy sitting up in first class like he done paid for a ticket. How many of us are sitting in places just because we got a relationship with the Father? Come on now. You mad at me, you ought to be mad at my relationship. My relationship is what got me where I am today. Somebody shout upgrade. So what I realized upgrade is based on relationships. I got the upgrade because of my relationship with Delta. He got the upgrade because his relationship with the Father. Minister Shirley Chambers said in her prophetic declaration this morning, uncommon favor. How many believe I'm going to receive uncommon favor? So we sit up there in first class. They call you Mr. Garmin in first class. They call you 24B in coach. <laughs> so we, we get to Mexico, right? And we got this private transportation to the resort. He's sitting back there, legs stretched out. The guy looked back, he said, would you like something to drink? I got beer, water. I say, he gonna take water. We get to the hotel, and we get ready to check in, and we were supposed to check in in the one place, and the lady said, we're putting you in the Grand Lux. Wow. And look at this, in my stupidity, I said, I didn't sign up for the Grand Lux. <laughs> I didn't book the Grand Lux. I'm standing at the counter arguing with the lady. No, I'm at the Grand Mayan. She said, no, we got you in the Grand Lux. I said, uh-uh, go back and look at the reservation. I booked the Grand Mayan. Sir, we putting you in the Grand Lux. And I got a little attitude because I thought they gave away my room because I didn't arrive until about 10, 10.30 at night. I said, these jokers done gave my room away and they going to stick me any place. I said, I want to see the manager. (laughs) 
Manager come over there and said, Mr. Garman, do we have a problem? I said, yeah, I booked the Grand Mayan. She said, and the dude looked at with confusion on his face. He said, you don't want to stay at the Grand Lux? I said, no, I booked the Grand Mayan. The dude looked at me, he said, Mr. Garman, he said, the Grand Lux is the best place we have on the property. He said, it's an upgrade at no charge. How many know I felt about that small? I said, oh! I said, she didn't say that! She didn't tell me that! You mean to tell me I'm trying to get something that I want, but the Father got something better? You up here arguing about what you want, and the daddy says, I got something. Tell your neighbor, say, close your mouth. Sit down. You're up here fighting for what you want. I don't know who here in the Holy Ghost today. Who, who you fighting for what you want? And God said, I'm upgrading you, stupid. You want to be in this location, but I'm putting you over here. You want to be with that person, but I'm putting you with this person. Say upgrade. I'm out of time. I'm out of time. I got 22 seconds. And the last thing, and we got to go. Last thing is, upgrades come because of relationships. Upgrades come because the Father knows what's best. Number one, upgrade comes because of relationships. Upgrade comes because the Father knows what's best. He knows what you need. And the last thing, I realized something. When you get upgraded, you got to give up your old. You can't keep both rooms. So when they upgrade my seat on the plane, I had to give up my old seat. When they upgraded my room at the resort, I had to give up my old room. On the way back to Atlanta, they upgraded us again on the flight back to Atlanta. I ain't tell you that, first lady. They upgraded us on the flight back. And I had to give up my you're not even ready for your upgrade until you show God you're ready to get rid of. Until you're ready to say, Lord, I will let this go in order to get what you have for me. As long as you're trying to keep it, they can't upgrade you. That's why Jesus said, I'm going to give up my life. I'm going to let go my life. I'm going to give up my glory in heaven and come down here to the earth and die and pay the price for the sins of the world just so that you and you and you and you and me can be because without the shedding of blood there's no remission of sin in order for us to be upgraded he had to let go of his life 
so that we can have. That's why I serve him. That's why. Who else has given up their life so that I can live not only here, but eternity. It's a better promise that's founded on a better covenant. And who doesn't want better? Bow your heads, close your eyes. I'm done. If you're in this place, you have a relationship with your father. Every head bowed, every eye closed. On this Palm Sunday, I can't think of a better way for you to upgrade your life than to submit your life, to let go of your old life. That's the only way you're going to get new life. And when you surrender to God and say, Lord, I surrender, I'm giving up my old ways because I need an upgrade in my life today. If that's you today, just lift up your hand. I want to pray for you today before we leave. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. All over the sanctuary, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, God, thank you, Lord. There's another gentleman in the house today. You need to be raising your hand. It's time for you to give up that old life. It's time for you to let it go. There's another gentleman in here. I feel it in my spirit. Lift up your hand. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is between you and God. That's all it is. It's between you and God. It's no sense in you trying to please somebody. You know where you stand. You know where you are. It's between you and God. Those that lifted their hands, you can put your hands down. Thank you for being honest with God today. Thank you for being honest with God. Everyone say this prayer with me. Dear Father, I thank you for this new covenant in Jesus Christ. Because he died, I can live. I accept Jesus in my heart and in my life. God, upgrade me to be everything you call me to be. And Lord, I submit to you today, and I let go the old so I can embrace the new. In Jesus' name, amen. Y'all clap your hands and thank God so much for restoration. The doors of the church are open. If you feel God leading you to make Word of Faith, Love Center, your church home, get out of your seats right now and come down here to the altar. We want to welcome you into the Lord's house. <coughs> The doors of the church are open. If you feel like God is leading you to make Word of Faith Love Center your church home, we welcome you to come. Everybody needs a pastor. Everybody needs a place that they can call home. And I would love to be your pastor. Anybody today? Anybody today? Amen. Amen. Come on. Come on, sister. Come on. Come on. I give myself. I give myself. My life is Hallelujah. Anybody else? Own. Anybody else? We welcome you to come at this time. You, Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Y'all stretch your hands towards our dear sister today. Father, Lord, we just thank you so much, oh God, for your daughter coming to be a member of Word of Faith Love Center. I pray, Lord, that everything that she needs in order to grow into the mighty, virtuous woman that she is, that you will provide that for her in this place, this, this place of believers coming together by faith to encourage one another. I pray that the blessing and the favor that is upon my life would come upon her life and that, Lord, she would use her gifts and her talents to build your kingdom. We receive her in your house today in Jesus' name. Amen. Clap your hands and welcome her.
Amen. Stand to your feet, everybody. So glad to see you. Guess what next week is? Easter Sunday. Yes. Woo, it's going to be off the chain up in here next week. Were y'all blessed by the word of the Lord today? Can y'all prophetically declare with me today that God is getting ready to upgrade my life? Come on, say that out of your mouth. God is getting ready to upgrade my life. God is getting ready to upgrade my relationships. God is getting ready to upgrade everything around me. Amen, amen. Now, let me introduce to you all my upgrade. The first lady of Word of Faith Love Center. Amen. God upgraded my life with her. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. So I wanted to celebrate. We wanted to celebrate the first lady of this church. She is such a dynamic woman of God. And I'm blessed to have her in my life. I really am. She loves the church. She loves you. She loves excellence. And she may get on your nerves sometimes. But it's for the good. Always for the good. Always for the good. So I just want you to know, First Lady, I could not have made it 19 years without you. No way. No way. Not possible. That you've been my cheerleader and my coach. You've been my strength. You've been my comforter when I needed comfort. You've been my encourager when I was down. You've been my different perspective on different things. And I appreciate the gift of God that's on the inside of you. Thank you for allowing your anointing, your gifts, your talent to operate within what God has called us to do right here at Word of Faith Love Center. Thank you. Thank you. We're not in competition, but we are a team. And I thank God so much that I can feel the unity and the teamwork when I'm doing ministry with this woman of God right here, amen? I don't take that for granted, but I thank God for it, amen? And I want y'all to celebrate her today. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Amen. So I think, uh, Shelby, you want to present the flowers to her? Amen. Amen. Did you want to say something? Okay. Can I get a mic, please? We getting ready to leave. We getting ready to leave. Just a moment. Just a moment. You still going to make brunch? Good morning, Word of Faith Love Center. I'm going to be really brief. I just wanted to say to our pastor and first lady that this has been a wonderful, blessed, anointed 19 years for many of us. And for any of you that have been here less than 19 years, you missed it, but stay tuned. And they have been leaders that I've seen work from sun up to sundown. I've seen them labor at night, labor in the morning. I've seen her clean bathrooms. Yes, she is a stickler for excellence, but she does not ask anyone to do anything that she is not willing Amen. to do herself. Amen. And him as well. If he comes in the fellowship hall and there's been an event, he's carrying garbage bags, he's doing whatever. Whether we have enough help here or not, he's right in the thick of things. And she does so much that so many people don't see. We are blessed people to have them as our pastor and first lady. And I want to say thank you so very much for your laboring, 
for your love, for your prayers, and your covering of all of us so well. I know you're not perfect, but you're our perfect. God bless you ah. for many more years. Many, many more years. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you so much. Bless you, bless you, bless you. My prayer for you is that you will be everything God called you to be. That as we grow, you will also grow. That you will fulfill your purpose and your destiny. That you were created on purpose for purpose. And I pray that the blessings of God will come upon your life and overtake you. And may the favor of God surround you like a shield. May God order your steps, guide your thoughts, and fill your life in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Y'all have a wonderful week.